We're going to take a look at how to use the Gradebook Setup Wizard in Brightspace, working with this weighted syllabus to choose our preferences and our setup for our gradebook. So we can later set up those categories and then add those assignments and graded items. So from Brightspace, we're going to click on the waffle near the top center to navigate to the class we want to set up the grades for. And then in the top nav bar, click grades. grades. Near the top left, you'll see Enter Grades, Manage Grades, Schemes, and Setup Wizard. Click Setup Wizard. Now I want to mention that it's really important that before you add any graded items, so before you add any quizzes or discussions or assignments, the best practice is to go through the Setup Wizard to set up your gradebook and then the categories first before you add any of those items. So in the setup wizard, there are seven steps we'll follow through to set this up. When I'm accessing it now, it's showing me my current gradebook settings, but we're going to ignore that right now and go through the wizard. So at the very bottom, I'll click on start. The first steps is to choose the grading system. You'll see there's three types. There's a weighted gradebook option, a points gradebook option, and a formula option. So very briefly, Weighted Gradebook allows you to create categories like assignments, quizzes, and to set a percentage for each category. You can also create a points gradebook where you have a certain number of points for every category or item in your gradebook and you calculate the grade just how many points they got out of the total number of points. Finally, there is a formula type, but this is a very complicated setup. So in general, we recommend using a weighted or point system instead. So for this example, again, we're going to use the syllabus here. So I will choose a weighted gradebook today. And a quick note throughout Brightspace, whenever you see the question mark, you can click on the question mark and it will bring up more information about the item. So I'll scroll to the bottom and click continue. Here I'm choosing how the final grade is released. The first option, calculate a final grade. It's going to calculate the grade based on how I've set up my gradebook and I won't be able to change that. The other option, adjusted final grade, it'll calculate that final grade, but then if I want to round up that 88.9 to a 90, let's say, I could make that adjustment if I choose adjusted final grade. For now, we're going to use adjusted final grade. The other option on this tool is the whether or not to automatically release the final grade. Now, we suggest that if you might have to tweak those grades, do not check this. Because then you, if you check this and you expect that you might be adjusting those grades, then you might have students who see one grade and then another grade, and that could be confusing to them. So we'll just choose adjusted final grade and continue. Step three is talking about the grade calculations. So this is how to treat things that maybe have not been done yet or maybe something a student didn't submit. If you choose drop ungraded items, that means every assignment that a student didn't submit will just be dropped. So let's say you have four discussions and you've only done two of them. The others would just be dropped. And it might look like the student is doing better than they are if they've skipped assignments because those would be dropped instead of showing zero. The opposite choice is to treat ungraded items as zero. In this scenario, those four discussions will have zeros to start. And then as the student completes them, they will see their scores for the things they've complete and zero for the things they've either skipped or not gotten to yet. Starting in the fall of 2024, Brightspace grade settings include an automatic zero for missing submissions option. When this is enabled or checked, once the due date for the item passes, any learners who didn't complete it will automatically get a zero. And at the bottom here, we have another option about automatically keeping the final grade updated. So this is as new grades come in, whether or not to update that. Go ahead and check that. We'll click continue to. Step four is the default grade scheme. The default is percentage. And here at Stony Brook, we don't have another scheme right now. So I recommend leaving that clicking continue to go to step five. Step five is just how many decimal places you view. The default is two, and if you wanna change it, go ahead. Otherwise, click continue to go to the next one. And now we have the student view options. This is what the students will see on their end. We recommend checking the points and the weights. 
if you are using uh, this weighted grade book. So then they can see how the points are contributing to the grade plus those weights for those items. Whatever you chose for the previous step for decimals, keep the same number here so you and the students see the same thing. And then there is an option where you can have a text item for a grade, so like excellent, good, something like that. Here is where you would set the character limit for those text items, how much would actually be displayed. And then finally, this last checks box here, display final grade calculations to users. For the weighted grade book, this doesn't have much influence on what the students would see if you actually check it. It just really gives them a button that shows the same thing they're already seeing because we've checked points and weighted. However, if you don't check all those, you might find checking this box would give students an additional view that might be helpful for them, or if you're using a different type of gradebook. We'll click continue to the final step, which is the summary. This is kind of what we saw when we first came in. So it's reviewing the steps we chose, and when I click on finish, it will have set up my gradebook, and it brings me to the option to go ahead and create categories, which we'll take a look at next.